great, thank you. Um, I'd like to take a break through what, uh, what's happened over the last 12 months with Fortuna. Um, skip through. So Fortuna, for those of you who aren't all that familiar, Fortuna was or is a South American dominated organization. Um, July last year, they acquired Roxgold. Roxgold is the West African side of the business now. Um, and that combination has brought together a pretty experienced management team. Um, the the Roxgold side, the management, most of that has stayed within the organization. Um, and we're seeing what's now emerging as a quite a large mid-tier um, commodity company. We've got copper, gold, sorry, silver, lead, zinc, um, and gold. And we're increasingly becoming much more of a gold-focused company. Annual production is now looking around about the 400,000 ounce mark per annum on a gold equivalent basis. Um, and we're generating a significant amount of cash that comes out of this. Just quickly, where are we placed around the world? Um, as you can see there, we've got an underground operation in Mexico. We've got another underground operation in Peru. They're both uh, um, silver, lead, zinc. Uh, last week, the Cerro Lindo heat bleach operation in Argentina was formally opened. Um, and that's now ramped up and it's, it's hitting all of its marks. Um, and then the rocks gold assets that were acquired last year, Yeramoco, the underground operation in Burkina Faso. Um, and the one I'll talk about more today is the Segela project. Um, it's a bit of a circularity here because it was just over two years ago at this conference where we announced the maiden um, pre-fees numbers for the forum Segela. Um, high level summary, uh, the Q1 production for Fortuna globally, you can see the impact there. Um, year over year in Q1 of the acquisition of Rocks Gold in the gold sales, sorry, gold production, as well as the ramp up of Lindero. Um, the silver, lead and zinc, that's pretty much in, co in keeping with what the mine plan is saying, so it's just drifting around there. But gold equivalent for um, Q1 for this year is just over 100,000 ounces. Um, that translates into sales, you can, see, and you can see the drivers there, significant increase in gold production across the organisation, um, driving a significant increase in, in, in cash at the end of the day. What have we got? The four mines uh, are all hitting their straps now. We've got the focus on Segela. Segela will be moving through the construction phases now. We're looking at mid-year next year for first gold pool. And then we've got a fairly broad exploration portfolio as well, um, stretching across Argentina and Mexico, uh, Peru, and then also through Cote d'Ivoire and Burkina Faso as well. So bringing it back down to, to West Africa, um, Segela. Segela is a, a, an asset that Roxgold acquired from Newcrest in uh, 2019 um, for 20 million cash and another 10 million cash on first gold pour. Um, in the two and a half years, we've managed to pull this thing through. Um, the starting point was a 400,000 ounce inferred resource. We're now at a 1.1 million ounce reserve. Um, those figures on there are now a little bit out of date as our um, exploration guys continue to find more gold, and we'll touch on that in a second as well. Um, where are we at the moment though? As of uh, just over a week ago, we're at 54% completion on the build. Um, what you can see there in the photo is the, is the new accommodation camp, and that's now fully staffed up. Um, the, the project's about 173 million, and we're a little over halfway committed on that at the moment. Um, and similar to what you heard from Sandfire, we've also managed to secure pretty much everything we need in terms of major components and contractors. Um, before the ramp up happened in inflation. So we've pretty much locked everything away as well and that's either on the water or on the ground at the moment. Um, and then the exploration guys are pushing really hard on finding more ounces. Um, earlier this year we had another discovery called Sunbird. Um, that's just over a kilometre and a half away from where the mill is. Um, and that's going to be brought through to reserve by the end of the year. Hence why these numbers are now a little bit out of date in terms of the life of mine and what the overall grade is going to look like. We are fortunate in that the Segela project is a relatively high grade project. Life of mine grade, at reserve grade at the moment is around 2.8. Um, I'd expect that to stay the same and possibly even increase a little bit further um, as we bring new discoveries on. Just some happy snaps from uh, just over uh, four or five weeks ago. Uh, lots of activity on site now. It's, it's as always when you get a new mine being built, there's lots of people, lots of activity. And what we're seeing now is, is the, the, the first concrete going in for the ring beams for the tanks. Um, there's a lot of the ground works, ground prep's happening. Um, TSF's getting built, water harvesting dam's getting built. So we're just moving through those phases now. Um, had a lot of support from the government as well, which has been very beneficial. Um, just touching on the exploration side of things at Segela itself. Uh, so this is Sunbird. This is our release from uh, about two months ago. Um, we've been drilling non-stop since then, but one of the benefits, and this highlights it, 
is that at Segeda what we see is a significant number of very high grade results coming out. So grades such as 18 metres at 13, 18 metres at 20, that sort of stuff is going to go into an open pit. And these drive some very high strip ratios, but these pits are looking really good. We're also starting to look at underground on some of these. The, we haven't drilled to the bottom of these deposits as yet. Um, so that's the, the focus for the, for the guys for the next six months is to start looking at those. Um, the other thing is that we, every time we try to come back in with a, a more organized and, and regularized exploration program, we find another deposit. We're basically hitting one a year at the moment. So it tends to upset the plan. So we've still got at least 30 targets on the property we haven't even tested yet. Um, we've got rigs all over the countryside at the moment. Um, and I'd fully expect this to keep rolling through. And another example of what we've been finding, this is cooler, this is the highest grade pit. This is gonna be around about a six gram open cut. Um, as you can see on there, the phase one and phase two. What we also have is a, an emerging hanging wall uh, load, which we hadn't recognized earlier on. That's not in the optimized pit shells. So this is outside of that at the moment. And again, high grades, seven at 28, for example, 11 at 19. So we see this tenor just rolling through time and time again. Um, so you know, again, the, the, the DFS numbers are somewhat dated simply because we keep finding more uh, mineralization. Um, the hole at the very bottom there of that chute in the lower left, um, that's the deepest trend we've done anywhere on the property and that's still uh, three metres at six and a half, which we haven't followed up with yet. And so again, more potential coming through. Further afield, some scout drilling last year, um, hit Gabbro North, which is a relatively small but again, same thing, high grades. Um, the metallurgy on the property is really simple. It is literally just quartz, a little bit of pyrite, and quite a lot of coarse visible gold. Commonly get match head size pieces of gold through there. Um, so, and again, this is what they look like when we start off. We fully expect this to grow over the next six months as we do some more holes into it. Um, but all this is leading us towards what's the mill gonna look like? The other thing is the wider exploration portfolio just in West Africa alone, um, touched on Segela. We've got other, several other properties in the broader Ivorian space. Um, the exploration team is based at Segela at the moment and they're using that as their base. They're expanding further afield now. We've got a, quite a lot of ground further north. Um, and then also over in Burkina where we've got a Yaramoko mine. They've got Brownfields exploration on the property there. Um, there's a big campaign happening later on this year to, go to extend the underground further. Um, we're already deepest drilling there is at 1,300 metres and they're still mineralised. So I'd expect that to, to grow a bit further over the next couple of years. And then the other project we haven't really mentioned much about in, the, in public is our Basura project in, in southern Burkina. Um, that's potentially our third project in West Africa. Um, we've got three rigs there at the moment. We will be looking to, if things go well, possibly get a maiden resource out towards the end of this year or early next, uh, just to see what we've got. But we've got about a 15 kilometre um, shear zone that we're drilling on. There's a significant amount of coarse gold in that project as well. Um, and so that's the one that we, we, we'd like to see that one emerge coming in behind Segela when Segela gets commissioned. Segela will be commissioned pouring first gold around about the middle of next year, about a year from now, um, which we think is a pretty remarkable occasion, uh, event given we acquired it only two and a half years ago. So three and a half years to, for acquisition through to, to, to gold pour. Um, and that's it. Thank you.